Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. The press conference is between the city of Dania Beach and the Broward Sheriff's Office. Mayor uh, Tamara James will be starting with our opening statements shortly, followed by uh, Sheriff Scott Israel. After that, we'll be taking some questions. Thank you again for being here. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here. Um, aside from being the mayor here in the city of Dania Beach, I live here in the city of Dania Beach, and this is a city where I was born and raised. We are in a state of mourning right now. Um, due to the recent tragedies and uh, due to the heartbreak and the frustration that we all feel, I want every, uh, every one of the residents in our community to know that the city of Dania, we're with you. We are standing with you and working alongside of BSO, we are trying to ensure that there is a quick resolution and an end to this. I'm standing here because there has been tragedy in the city and lives have been lost. Our hearts and our prayers go out to the victims of this tragedy. Our hearts and our prayers go out to anyone else who have been victimized and who has been affected by the senseless gun violence that is surrounding our city right now. And so I stand here with the Broward Sheriff's Office to try and put a quick end to this. And now we're gonna hear from our sheriff, Scott Israel. Good afternoon. Um, I must start out by directly speaking to the families of those who've lost loved ones and loved ones have been injured. Um, there are no words. All I could say is that um, we put God first and, and, and continue from here. Uh, this is an absolute tragedy. I want to thank you, Mayor, for arranging this press conference and for being out front in Dania. I want to thank the clergy, the members of the clergy who are here today. Um, we can't solve crimes. We can't have a connectivity with the community without the community, without the Broward Sheriff's Office, and without our clergy working in concert. So thank you all for, for what you mean to Dania and what you mean to Broward County and what you mean to me personally. Um, <clears throat> I have breaking news that I will go into in a second, but before I do that, I want to say to all citizens of Dania Beach and Broward County, it is absolutely time to stop burying eight-year-olds. If you know something, it is your obligation and duty. It is the right thing to do to call the Crime Stoppers immediately. Don't go on social media. Don't post on anywhere. Call Crime Stoppers and make sure law enforcement is aware of what you know so justice will be served. We want to bring all suspects and culprits into custody. I pray it's done in a, in a safe fashion and that they're all judged by a jury of their peers. Um, as I speak to you now, there is a suspect in one or more of these shootings named Arvis Brown. As I stand here and speak, Arvis Brown has just bailed out of a vehicle in Tallahassee. The marshals pulled over a vehicle with three men. Two of the men are in custody. A firearm is recovered. We don't know if the firearm is related to any of the shootings in Dania. This is where our investigation begins. There is a perimeter up in Tallahassee. We will get real-time intelligence, and hopefully, I pray by the end of this news conference, I'll be able to say that Mr. Brown has been taken into custody. Um, but right now, he is at large, and the U.S. Marshals are looking for him. Again. If you know anything about this tragedy, about these heinous acts of violence, it is your obligation as a citizen to call Crime Stoppers. Whatever else, it is time for us to stop going to funerals for little boys and little girls. The violence must stop. As Dr. King said, violence only begets violence. I'm going to turn this press conference over now to Sergeant Scott Champagne, who is the director of our Homicide Division, and he's going to take you through the chronology of the events that began on Christmas evening. 
And that, that time after that, we'll be taking questions. Thank you. Good morning. We, uh, the homicide unit here at the sheriff's office, became involved in this investigation on Christmas night, as everyone is aware, with the uh, murder of Christopher Jordan. Through the course of that investigation, we determined uh, that Christopher Jordan was murdered as a result of a uh, retaliatory uh, hit, if you will, in connection to a previous homicide uh, of a man by the name of Dijon Brown uh, a few years back. Uh, our primary suspect, Arvis Brown, in this particular case, who, as the sheriff stated, uh, is currently uh, fleeing from authorities up in the Tallahassee area. Uh, he had been released from Florida State Prison on unrelated charges uh, out of uh, Lee County uh, in November. Uh, he sought vengeance uh, on Christopher Jordan uh, because it was believed by Arvis Brown that Christopher Jordan was, in fact, uh, directly involved in the homicide of Dijon Brown. In that particular case, there was another suspect that was taken into custody uh, three years ago. That case, unfortunately, uh, took a turn for a worse because of lack of cooperation from witnesses who changed their eyewitness testimony. That homicide of Christopher Jordan on Christmas night set off a chain of events where we've had the additional shooting. Uh, the second uh, incident, uh, while it's, it's not directly related to the murder of Christopher Jordan, it is in that the cousin, one of the cousins of Christopher Jordan uh, was seeking out a firearm, the purchase of a firearm to protect himself because word was that he was next on, on a list uh, that Arvis Brown had generated. During the course of that incident, while attempting to make the transaction for the firearm, the person that was selling the firearm never had an intent to sell that firearm. It was more so to rob uh, this individual. Um, in, in the course of a struggle, uh, the victim was pistol whipped, uh, the gun, the firearm discharged, and the victim sustained a bullet fragment to the lower left eye. The next incident, which is being investigated uh, in conjunction with homicide by the Violent Crimes Unit, uh, took place as a direct result uh, of a continuation uh, of either witness elimination or silencing potential witnesses and retaliatory strikes for the Christopher Jordan homicide. The latest uh, incident, obviously involving uh, Rasheed Cunningham, the eight-year-old, uh, while we do not believe he was the intended target, the intended target, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, sustained multiple gunshot wounds and is currently hospitalized for those injuries. Uh, and it's our understanding that that particular victim was attempting to shield Rasheed from that gunfire. As the sheriff stated, uh, the homicide unit, along with violent crimes unit, are Piper unit. We have been aggressively working this case around the clock. Uh, my guys have not stopped, and uh, we will continue to see this thing through. We currently have detectives uh, responding up to the Tallahassee area to work in conjunction with the Marshall, Marshall's Fugitive Task Force. As we were coming down here, it was brought to our attention, as the sheriff stated, we have two in custody. One with uh, a firearm was secured. I cannot tell you if that firearm is related to the homicide investigations that we're conducting here in the city of Dania Beach, um, but that is a question we will seek to answer. We're currently pouring over the forensic evidence on all of the cases to ensure that we don't miss anything. And that is currently being tested today, and we will hopefully have some answers this afternoon with regards to ballistic and forensic evidence on the case. And that is where we stand right now. As I said, Arvis Brown is currently, he fled on foot from the vehicle, and there's an active search going on right now with the authorities up in Tallahassee, along with the Marshall's Fugitive Task Force. I want to thank the members of the Broward Sheriff's Office. Uh, the members of our agency have worked tirelessly around the clock since Christmas night. We've had over 50 deputies and civilian members of our agency working uh, in Dania over the last two or three nights. We will do everything humanly possible to stop the violence. We need your help. We're one team. We're not the Miami Dolphins and the, and the communities, not the New England Patriots. We are one team working together. I'm holding up a photo of a black pickup truck. This is in the custody of the Broward Sheriff's Office. We need to know who was driving this pickup truck or who occupied this pickup truck from 7 p.m. on 
on Christmas evening until the time that Mr. Jordan was violently and cowardly killed. We need to know who was in this pickup truck. If you know anything, I'm going to end the way before I take questions, the way I started. Dania Beach, if you know anything about any aspect of this case, please call us. It's time to stop going to funerals in Dania Beach and start worrying about children, not worrying about protecting people who committed violent felonies. Any questions? We believe that this stems from a previous homicide. Uh, that homicide was three years ago, and that was uh, an individual by the name of Dijon Brown. Um, it was believed that Christopher Jordan uh, may have been involved in that homicide, but was not charged back then. Uh, Arvis Brown had every reason to believe that uh, uh, Christopher Jordan was involved, hence the homicide occurring on Christmas night. Right now, we're, it's an ongoing investigation, but Arvis Brown uh, undoubtedly is a, a suspect in these cases. We're just trying to put the case together. Three of the four we're, we're working on right now to his involvement, including the eight-year-old, yeah. That's correct. We, we have yet to identify those. It's still, the situation's still fluid. We're getting that information real time now. I couldn't even speak, and I couldn't tell you. Th this just happened as we were driving from uh, the public safety building. So this is real time. And if uh, uh, our detectives are in contact with the marshals in Tallahassee, if any new information comes available before the conclusion of the conference, uh, it'll, it'll be uh, disseminated. If not, our, our director of PIO, Vita Coleman Wright, will make sure it's disseminated as it comes in. But he is, in, he is uh, as far as we know, in a perimeter in Tallahassee Two people that were in the vehicle with him are in custody. A firearm was recovered, and that's basically all we know. He is a suspect in the case. Right now, he has an active warrant for possession of a firearm by a violent career criminal, and that was pursuant to our initial investigation on Christmas night. We're still working on that. Well, certainly they will be. I mean, we don't know who they are, but certainly that'll be, you know, that's something for our detectives. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that within uh, the next day or two, our detectives will probably be en route to Tallahassee to, you know, keep, put, keep, piece this together. But certainly there'll be peop people of interest. Okay. Um, excuse me one second. August Brown is in custody. Yes, sir. Is there anybody else that watched my service on the New Year's Day service? Is there anybody else that could be alarmed about the community? No, uh, at this point, if we, if we find that out, we will disseminate it to the clergy through our chaplain, Chaplain Knowles. Thank you again for, for being here. But I know you're all going to do sermons on Sunday, and I don't tell a preacher how to preach, but, uh, but I, I hope at some point in the sermon, you can look out to your congregation and tell them that they have an obligation to call police or call Crime Stoppers. If they know something, they can remain confidential. We don't need their names. We just need the information. That's ongoing right now, and in the interest of protecting the integrity of the investigation, we're not going to. Gregory Sims was the victim of the robbery that we mentioned that was indirectly related, uh, only in that he was a cousin of the decedent in the first homicide, Christopher Jordan. So I'm sorry, the victim, thank you. The victim was related to Christopher Jordan. Gregory Sims, right now, our investigation has not suggested that he's connected in any way to him.
it was a robbery under the ruse of a firearm sale. And, and he was seeking out that firearm because he was fearful of any retaliatory uh, hits uh, on additional people. Yes. In the, in, there's a couple things that we're concerned about right now in the interest of the, the investigation and protecting that. We're not going to disclose that just yet. We're also, uh, we have some of these victims that we kept on our protection until we had these individuals in custody. There are still victims. Um, they're, they're protected by, right now, the Broward Sheriff's Office is protecting people. So that's, that's the only information we're going to go up. Um, to the clergy that are here tonight, you bring up a great question, or a great point. There are going to be vigils and there are going to be services uh, to mourn and to heal, and we appreciate that. Uh, Chaplain Knowles will be taking the addresses and the times uh, of any services you have. Chaplain Knowles will be tasked with forwarding that information to Captain Danny Marks, who is the captain in charge of Dania Beach. Uh, when the captain is aware of the services, uh, there will be, if not inside, there will certainly be a BSO presence in or around the area. So as these services uh, commence, please make sure Chaplain Knowles has this information so he could forward it to, to, to uh, Captain Marks. Um, to the family again, uh, I cannot tell you uh, how heavy my heart is, and I just pray that... Um, we heal together as a community. I pray that there's an end to violence. I pray that justice be served and that, uh, you know, it, it's in the Lord's hands for the family. God bless you. Thank you very much.